Hey, let's talk about Outlast 2. So this was supposed to be my video for Nier Automata. But holy shit, that game is long. 26 endings, 26. So back to Outlast 2. So the first Outlast released September 2013 for Windows and the following year for consoles. And when it hit the survivor horror scene, it hit hard, raising the standards from games before it. The game featured a lot of jump scares, visual and audio cues, and a unique camera mechanic that's equipped with night vision to help you see in the dark. And trust me, you needed it. But the camera mechanic added a stress factor to it with very limited battery power. It kept you on your toes looking around, finding new batteries while avoiding enemies. And something else that made it unique was the fact that you can't fight off enemies. You have to run. These two things were the driving point that gave Outlast his own identity in the survivor horror genre. Then comes Outlast 2. All set in a whole new region with all new characters. All we know about the plot for sure is what's stated in the opening scenes of the Outlast 2 demo. You play as the character known as Blake Langerman. You and your wife Lynn are journalists working on a case involving the mysterious murder of a young pregnant woman who is referred to as Jane Doe. That's all we know, and frankly that's all we need to know. Let's be honest, survivor horror games aren't really great because of their plot. Don't get me wrong, they can have great plots, but it's usually not the norm. Outlast 2 is working on upping the psychological horror of the game. For the most basic comparison, think of Slenderman, the fact that you're wandering in the middle of nowhere, totally surrounded by darkness, not knowing what lies just beyond the reach of your flashlight, or in this case, your camera, the fact that anything can happen at any time, with audio cues working against you as well. I don't expect much more complexity than from the first one, and to be honest, personally that doesn't matter to me. In fact, I prefer stories that are alluded to and that the player can piece together themselves, and I'm speaking particularly for survivor horror games. A fine example would be the Five Nights at Freddy's plot and how it's not directly revealed. When that game hit, the internet exploded with fan theories because we love piecing together the little details we have for the bigger picture, the bigger meaning behind it. While Outlast 2 does show a lot of symbolism, I don't expect much subtlety, which is fine. It's understandable that the developers focus more on the actual experience than the story. There are no new mechanics that are revealed yet, but I'm sure we do expect a few new ones. I mean, I don't feel that the camera mechanic has gotten old yet. Then again, I can't imagine much what else they could have added, so it should be interesting to see what happens. I am really excited for this one. Just judging by the demo, there's going to be a lot of disturbing imagery and symbolism in Outlast 2. Oh my god, you see the ending for that demo? Ugh, it makes me squeamish. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of what the fuck moments. But those are the moments we love, right? So the release date has been confirmed for April 25th. Along with Outlast 2 will be the Outlast bundle release, known as Outlast Trinity. This includes Outlast, Outlast Whistleblower, and Outlast 2. As of release, there are only physical copies available. For Xbox One and PS4, Outlast 2 alone will be $30, while the Outlast Trinity bundle will be $40 at release. There you have it, new characters, new settings, new plot, hopefully new game mechanics. This should be interesting, though there's not much else to say. I was hoping I would learn a lot about Outlast 2 before I started doing research for this video, but I couldn't find much. So there you go, we're just gonna have to wait for it. Hopefully I'll play it when it releases and I'll release a review for it. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. Later, babes.